become infected with Mr. Suicide when they eat food or vegetation or drink water containing the egg. Too many of Solian eggs are passed to the environment in human feces. In the environment, eggs can live for months. In the pig's stomach, the eggs hatch and then travel in the bloodstream to other parts of the body and grow into larvae cysts. If a person eats undercooked pork infected with cysts, the larva can continue to grow in the person and become a tegu. The eggs go through two digestion cycles to become a tegu. So in a nutshell, pigs infect humans and humans infect pigs. People with a tegu worm can pass eggs or infection directly to other people. This occurs when someone eats food or drinks water that's been contaminated with eggs. A person can also digest eggs from their own tegu, sometimes called autoinfection. Because the eggs are too small to be seen with the naked eye, and people with a tegu worm infection often don't have symptoms or know that they have a tegu worm, the person with the infection most often doesn't know that they're spreading the infection to other people or back to pigs. After infection, there is an incubation period. Both pigs and humans can spread the infection starting about two months after digesting eggs or cysts. In pigs, Mr. Suicide, the cyst, can remain viable and infected to humans for up to five years. A tenacious tegu worm may survive in humans and produce eggs for several decades. The person will remain infectious for as long as they have the tegu worm. In the environment, eggs may remain viable for a number of months. The same way that eggs can hatch in a pig's stomach, travel in the bloodstream, and grow into larvae cysts, the same can occur in humans. The condition is called cystocytosis and is defined as a tissue infection, which is non-intestinal, caused by the larva stage in a newborn pig worm. Because the cysts develop after digesting eggs, Having a poor tegu worm infection or living with someone who does are risk factors for developing cystocytosis. A human with a cystocytosis infection but without a large tegu worm is not a source of infection and cannot spread the disease. The onset of symptoms of cystocytosis is often too late. Cystic suicide, the cysts, are able to turn off its host's immune defenses so inflammation generally doesn't occur until the cyst dies. Symptoms may present five years or even decades after exposure. The symptoms of cystocytosis and its effects depend on the number of cysts, their location, and stage of development. Cysts can form almost anywhere in the body where blood vessels become narrow. Cysts can develop as painless small bumps under the skin or in muscle causing little or no ill effects. Or they can have serious effects such as ocular cysts causing blindness. Shown here are some photos showing cysts under the skin, on the tongue, and on the eye. Other places where cysts can develop include the liver, lung, heart, and brain.
neural sensory psychosis is the name given to the condition which first developed in the brain tissue or in the central nervous system. It's the most serious form of the disease. Symptoms include headaches, nausea and vomiting, balance and vision problems, memory and learning problems, paresthesia, seizures, and increased brain pressure, which can lead to death. Neurosystem psychosis can sometimes be difficult for doctors to diagnose because the symptoms can mimic or imitate other conditions, such as brain tumors, strokes, hemorrhage, meningitis, and epilepsy. It's estimated that more than 100 million people worldwide have a sister psychosis infection. Rates are higher where there is poor sanitation, where pigs are raised and allowed to go near where people leave their human waste, and where pork is eaten raw or undercooked. It's endemic, meaning it's common and regularly found in areas of Mexico, Latin America, India, Africa, Spain, Portugal, and Asia. In the United States, sister psychosis is a growing health concern. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention has declared it a neglected infection of poverty, meaning it's an infection that has received little surveillance or prevention and primarily affects impoverished people in the United States. The CDC estimates about 2,000 people are diagnosed with neurosister psychosis each year with frequent cases being found in New York, California, Texas, Oregon, and Illinois. Currently, sister psychosis is not nationally reportable, so the national statistics are not known, but the infection is found mostly in Hispanic communities with immigrants from endemic areas, and this is due to the number of people who have immigrated from Mexico and Latin America and the number of people who travel to and from those areas. Some hospitals in Los Angeles, California report neurocystosis, accounting for about 10% of all seizures that present to their emergency room. Still, all people are at risk, and cases have been reported in communities with low risk factors. One example occurred in the early 90s in a New York Orthodox Jewish community where a number of people became infected by domestic workers who had immigrated from Latin America. Worldwide, neurosyphilosis is a leading cause of seizures and epilepsy and carries a stigma with profound social, physical, and psychological effects. In Los Angeles County, their economic growth was estimated over the last two decades to be greater than $136 million. The disease is considered potentially eradicatable, and this is because the tapeworm life cycle requires a human host. Pigs can only get the infection from humans with a tapeworm infection. The spread of the disease from pigs to humans can be controlled, and there's no other reservoir known in nature. Because coniasis and sister psychosis do not lead to sudden large-scale international outbreaks of disease, the World Health Organization doesn't believe sister psychosis merits international notification and reporting. China is the only country that has a national surveillance and control program in place. The World Health Organization, instead of reporting, is focusing more on prevention and control. To globally eradicate the disease, the World Health Organization, along with the League Against Epilepsy and the International Bureau for Epilepsy, has joined to form a campaign titled Out of the Shadows. Objectives include to increase public and professional awareness of epilepsy as being a treatable condition and to encourage governments to put in place programs to address awareness, education, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. Goals are by 2015 to have a strategy in place for control and elimination of coniasis and sister psychosis.
and by 2020 to increase efforts in selected areas for control and elimination. Shown here is a poster which has been distributed in endemic areas. What's being advocated by healthcare professionals is improved sanitary conditions and ending the practice of open defecation, hand hygiene, treatment for humans who have been found to be infected with tapeworms, better pig husbandry and marketing practices, and promoting safe cooking practices. In the United States, the infection can be acquired by eating food contaminated by a person with a tapeworm and possibly from contaminated produce shipped to the U.S. Because a single person with a tapeworm can be the source of infection for multiple cases, some experts have called for the following. Increasing clinician awareness, especially for those who care for Hispanic and other at-risk populations. National reporting of cystic in order to gather data on the currents. Currently, only California and Oregon require reporting. Testing for tapeworm infection for people diagnosed with cystic Testing of household members and other close contacts to find tapeworm carriers so they can be treated and removed as a source of future transmission of the disease. Screening of domestic workers and food handlers who are from areas where the disease is endemic. Testing can be done using a simple blood test requiring only a finger stick. And the experts suggest that those found to be infected should be removed from work if they're in the public sector until complete treatment of the tapeworm is medically confirmed. And there would be four people working, um, child care workers, health care workers, and food handlers. The most proactive area in the United States addressing this infection is in California. The Department of Public Health in Los Angeles, along with the CDC, conducts surveillance that includes education of public health care providers and nurses. When a case is identified, a public health nurse interviews the patient and offers free testing to close contacts in order to identify tapeworm carriers and prevent ongoing transmission. Those diagnosed with a tapeworm are referred for treatment. Nationally, all public health professionals and nurses, combining awareness, surveillance, reporting, and case management, together can reduce the devastating and costly effects of cystic sclerosis and can help prevent its transmission.